Where do you start with a video? Is that is that where we start here? Asking yeah. where you start? That's a really good question to start <laughs> where with. Where do you start? So when I'm game, making a, a game specific video, the first thing that I always research is what engine is the game using? Because there's a lot of standardization in the industry. And it's very common for most of the big games that are coming out to be on five or six major engines, especially because Upkeeping an engine, a custom engine, has become such an expensive task that most studios just license some other engine to, to use. And often that means that if there's a modding or modifying community, if there's a community of people who are examining previous games of the same engine, there's a lot of things that you can learn from that, that you can use, even in older versions of the engine. Very often when a new game comes out, which is the first game in a new version of an engine, the first thing that I will do is like research developer documentation for the previous version of the engine, because they, they tend to be a lot of things that still cross over. Traditionally, a good number of PC games store the variables that the game uses to set up its graphics in a series of files. If you are lucky, these files are user reachable, and that means that you can play around with them. Most engines have a dev console, like the Linux terminal, like any console that you would think. Most of the time it's not user reachable, sometimes it is, and you just have to press the right letter and it comes out. In older games it used to be always reachable, but it, sadly it's become a less common thing. And from there, it's a matter of experimenting, okay, like, let me, let, me, let me find a very specific example. Frostbite, which is the engine used by the Battlefield games. Battlefield games still allow user access to the console. So a new Battlefield game comes out. First thing I do is I know there's a variable that you can add to the launch commands of the exe that enables that developer console then i start the game and i press the tilde button and it opens the console and i'm like okay let's see if there's autocomplete and i will start writing things and see if it's autocompleting commands to me and i like okay if i press tab does it autocomplete it to me okay so using that i will search if there's a command like list all list command variables or something to see if i can get a dump of all the things that are inside there that i can play around with if not then it becomes a very painful process of going A and then pressing tab and autocomplete and see what comes out and like taking screenshots and documenting all the little variables that are inside. And then from the names of the variable, experimenting, um, trying to guess which ones are the ones that have to do with graphical fidelity or graphic rendering in general, and, and start changing values, see if they can be changed at runtime, see if those values I can put in a certain file and they will read them and see if it will change the game. A lot of it is guesswork, but once you sort of figure a certain engine, a lot of the games on the same engine tend, tend to do something similar. For Metal Gear Solid V, uh, that's probably my favorite, most proud case. Metal Gear Solid V runs in something they call the Fox engine, and that engine wasn't made for PC. And you can often tell when an engine wasn't made by, for, for PC, because it has no configuration files, it's all like a black box, it's all super contained. Uh, but I really, really liked this game and I really wanted to make a video about it. So I was exploring what to do, and I came through, uh, the, the game had a, a pretty big modding community. There were people making like model swaps, there were people introducing like new weapons in the game through mods. And I kept telling myself like, okay, but how did they figure this out? Or, like how they did this? So I started doing some detective work and this mod is taken from this mod that is taken from this mod that I started digging, 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 digging and found the first mods of the game and reverse Google search them and trace them back to like a couple of forum post posts. So I searched that entire forum thread and I went through like the first post and started reading them. And it was a post about like the performance of the game, but halfway through like post 300 or something, someone figured out how, um, how the, the game encrypted its files and created like a set of commands that you could do to unencrypt them. And someone made a tool about it and people started experimenting and modding with it. And I remember finding this very specific post of someone who went, hey, I unencrypted the files. I realized there's this folder here, which has a bunch of LUA scripts, 
which are what the game runs every time you change a graphical setting. So, and this is often how games do it. Like when you set shadows too low, the game will search up a script and it will be like, okay, shadows too low means that this resolution is set to this, this resolution is set to this, and this draw distance is set to this. So they have this on different buckets. And I remember seeing that and being like, oh, but now that I have access to this file, I can change what that script does. And I could, instead of lowering the resolution of shadows, I could make them not draw shadows at all. And I started doing this sort of thing and created basically a, a, a script that you could put in, uh, replace the normal script of the game. And it will basically like not draw shadows and use a lower resolution texture than what it usually will do. And it will be immediately obvious why the developer didn't do this, because it, it really screwed up with the dynamic lighting system of the game. Oh, but it, it, it was like a 35 performance gain. So yeah, that was amazing. I remember I was so proud of that and putting a video about it. And someone else took what I did in the video and created a mod, which was called like the Potato Metal Gear mod or something. In retrospective, I wish I could have thought of that and I could have published the mod instead of him. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was an interesting contribution that I could do to that community. Uh, and, and that was a very fun process, like digging, figuring out how to encrypt it and seeing all those files there and play around with them, that, that, it, that always makes my day, it's always really fun. The Far Cry games run on... I can't remember the name of the engine they use, but it's the same one for all the Far Cry games, it's just different versions of the same engine. And it has configuration files that are read, uh, everything in XML, so I thought to myself, oh, you can just probably find things there and change them, but it, it wouldn't really read it, anything. And um, I could not do like a really good video on several or most Far Cry games for a while. So I consulted with my Discord community and someone reminded me that I think Far Cry 3 or 4 has a decent modding community. So all together, we started looking through the documentation of the modding community. It had a bunch of encrypted configuration scripts that, as most games do, will execute when you set up in a specific settings, and people were playing around with those. So I started trying to basically what I did with Metal Gear and figured out if I could replace them. And some very bold person from my Discord just decided to copy all the variables from those hidden encrypted configuration files, copy and paste them on the normal XM user reachable XML and the game read them all. Like the, the game read all the variables that were not supposed to be on that file perfectly flawlessly. And from that discovery, we were able to, for example, mo dramatically modify the draw distance of different elements of the game. So you will have enemies three meters in front of you and they will not be rendering and you could like, it was obviously very impractical, but it was something that you could play around with for extra performance. And from that, we made some interesting discoveries. So an LOD system in video games is basically, and I'm in a nutshell because this is a very big topic, is when you create different versions of the models inside the games that have different quantities of polygons or different quantities of details. And then the low detail ones, you display far off into the distance. And if that thing gets close to you, you gradually replace them for more detail models. That way you conserve the PC's resources and the player doesn't really have to notice that that is happening. But those usually are set to distances. So X quantity of pixels, you load a different model. Double X quantity of pixels, you load a different model. When you play around with that, interesting things happen. For example, in the Far Cry games, a, you, different objects seem to be in different buckets in terms of if they're drawn or not, or if they use a lower version model or not. I think higher priority buckets are drawn farther, which are critical things that the um, player needs to notice. And not so important stuff tends to be not rendered at the same distance. Now there's the game called uh, Far Cry Primal, which it happens during the Stone Age. We noticed that the clothing of the cavemen was in a different bucket than the cavemen themselves. And that means that if you set a really low value of draw distance, if you were a certain distance from the cavemen, 
they will be completely naked until you get close to them and the clothes will render. So you will see them completely naked at a distance and then you will try to get close and the, uh, close and the clothes will appear. And it's, uh, it makes you wonder how they sort of created this game, but th those are the interesting things that happen when you sort of play around with the inside variables of a game that you were not supposed to reach in the first place. And to their credit, this variables that the Far Cry engine reads directly from the user reachable XML, they have not been fixed to this day. The last game in the Far Cry franchise that has, was released was Far Cry New Dawn, and I just copied over the same set of variables that I have been using for every Far Cry video, work at the first try. So thank you for that Far Cry team, thank you Ubisoft. Please continue doing that, that is just very, very fun that you can poke around in that. 80 90% of the work that I do is simply figuring out what are the variables that the game is loading when you set up a graphical setting or when the engine is loading on the first time. Trying to see where are the names, try to see where are the maximum and minimum values, and trying to see if you can make them read at the minimum values and see what happens from there. It will be, I, I think it will be healthier for the entire PC gaming ecosystem if we get more and more games that allow that sort of control over most variables. A good example of someone who does that is id. So the new, newest versions of the id engine used by the latest Doom and Wolfenstein games, uh, they have an user reachable developer console. It's you set up a, a variable on the launch commands of the game and you press tilde and it opens up in most games. And from there you can not only play with a lot of the graphical settings, but also activate things like God mode or infinite A mode. Like you can use it for actual cheats. But what I have always liked about these games is that if you open up the dev console and you type anything, you get a message that says you have enabled dev mode and you will not get any achievements on the game. Like a, and I think that's a fair deal. You can play around with the game all you want. You can set up custom settings. You can play around with your graphical settings in unsupported ways. Uh, the game is just making sure you're not cheating your way into achievements. Seems like a fair deal to me. And I, and I wish more games did this because this is something that you can, uh, a lot of players can get a lot of benefit out of. Um, I, I, I have discovered a couple of things on, the, on that dev console that makes both the new Doom and the new Wolfenstein games way more accessible and low in PCs. Um, so that is a tradition that I, that I hope it continues. The worst cases are the games that are complete, just bad ports from consoles. They will try to grab the code base from the console and slide, adapt it as best as possible with limited resources to PC. That means not many graphical settings. That means often that you will find quirks. Um, there's two, two examples come to mind, um, Nier Automata and uh, the latest Monster Hunter game. Both of these games, and this is not me saying it, this is like, was a community discovery. A lot of people started poking around the games and started realizing that the games use timing systems that are very common for consoles, but when you use that sort of system to calculate your timing on a PC, it causes stuttering. And so when you notice stuff like that, you're like, eh, it's a little bit irritating, especially because um, there's a, a tool that the, the guy who did the discovery developed a tool that will in real time intersect the calls that the game will be doing on the code and replace them with calls that were more efficient for PC. And he has been, he added a lot of different things to this tool that improved the, improved the CPU performance of Monster Hunter by a lot. And that allow things like changing the, the global illumination for uh, near Automata, which completely makes the game playable in like anything that I owned, otherwise it will have been impossible. Um, so from time to time, the work is cut out to me by someone else who made this marvelous pieces of software. Um, but these pieces of software sort of exist because someone noticed that the code was written specifically for console and it still has the quirks related to it. And it's up then to the community to fix it, which isn't exactly morally right, but uh, at least I'm 
glad that it exists so we can get to enjoy these games. Right. These are the kind of things that people who are writing computer games, not me, people who, are, who know what they're doing writing computer games are thinking about. Right? How can we do post-processing like motion blur and, and um, bloom and other kinds of filters that look good in a game but don't grind the whole thing to a halt?